What up guys, it's early in the morning for me, I just woke up a while ago, took a shower and so on, and now it's time to dominate some Krakens in Live Arena, but before that I just wanted to show you guys quickly and take a look. Nani? Maybe I'll make another video about this, we'll see. <laughs> I'm trying to make it happen, but um, right now we have the most craziest uh, CVC battle ever in the history of Raid. Pretty sure, I mean, I'm sure, but I'm. Some other people know more about the CVC because I don't pay that much attention to it because I feel it's, you know. I'm trying to get the rewards and I don't really care about uh, who wins against what clan. But some people do. And right now we had IPR at a whopping 144 <laughs> million points, and we have Gods and Legends at 142. It's the battle that people have been kind of uh, watching and following for the last couple of days. I think even, can we find it here? There's some, yeah, there's quite many familiar players actually here. It's, um, there's Anonymous, Dust Content as well. Then there's Shashup, same. Um, can we find Drock here? There's Cruisen, also makes content. And there's Drock. <laughs> so they got quite... Uh, few familiar faces to me. I mean, there's a couple other people that I know too, but those are the ones that make content. And yeah, they're, they're having a real hard battle from what I know. And you know, I don't follow this too much, but I know that it's kind of, you know, grudge, grudge match between these two clans. And IPR won against them once before, and <laughs> GNL is really, you know, mad about it, and they want to get even, because, you know, it's not really worth anybody's time or money to do this much points to maybe get one piece of reaction more than the other clan. Especially when, you know, Gods and Legends doesn't really focus on PvP a lot. And Stone Skin is generally way better than reaction anyway. And both of these clans have tons of it. So it's definitely not about, you know, trying to minimax your items for PvP and do well. I don't think it's about that for either one of them, so it's kind of interesting, um, unique battle. I'll try to see if I can, I can get an interview with IPR, but that might, uh, that might depend on on if they win and so on. But yeah, I'll try to, I'll try to get them uh, for a video. Or uh, surely I can get somebody on video. We'll see. We'll see. I met somebody yesterday and he he said that uh, let's talk about it tomorrow so I'm not I can't promise it yet but I'll I'll try to do it. I I know many people uh, in in my Discord and in other Discords I frequent I have seen people talking about this a lot so and and Reddit too yeah Reddit was talking about it as well. So since he did pick Sifi as the first and gave me this... Oh, okay, fuck. I was just gonna say this might be... I don't really want him to pick Narsus, but of course he did it, okay. Fair enough, fair enough. At least I'm not getting slept by the Sifi. Uh, might, might be a mistake. Maybe I should have just gone with... Um, Armands and Narsus and not, not UDK. I was being a little greedy there. I guess I need to go with Angora. I can't go with Datsus here. Because Datsus has bolster set and if I don't ban Narsus he would absolutely destroy me. Hmm. Don't think I can bring Helicat against Double Lockout, so does that mean that we're gonna go with Stalus? My Wukong isn't even he, as you can see, he's in Polymorph, and he's in support build right now, so he isn't really an option. And I also um, removed some some gear... Yeah, we have to go with this. Removed some gear, gear from my Tormin, and put my Helicat in a better build. I'm not using Tormin right now, so... Okay, let's see if we start out with a loss or not. He's only 4.1, 4.8k, not super high rating, so maybe he doesn't have the best of the gear. But the team is very good, and 
I didn't get Narses, so I'm not really super happy about my <laughs> my own team either. But we're gonna get um, Mario soon, so it will be way better after that. It's still gonna take me a little bit, but you know, <laughs> I'm counting the days until I get Marius, and that will be a big improvement. And I'll also get mod very soon, so... I will probably gear mod also in like stone skin or not bolster, and then I could use it against the Narsus teams. Okay, we got one polymorph on Galatir, that's good. But yeah, th let me know in comments what you think about the uh, IPR channel CVC war. Do you care about it at all? Or if you do, then what's your thoughts? Uh, I think the Harima is kind of low. If I don't weak it, I might even be able to kill it with the A3. Okay, of course we did. Of course. Damn it, damn it, that could have been a win if we didn't weak it. Ah. And Staldus barely not enough damage to kill it. Wait, wait, can we kill it with A1? I feel like I should do A1 and not, not the shield. Okay, nice. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Um, Sifi or Kriegs, yeah. No, uh, I think we just focus on Sifi now. But yeah, in, in my clan, you know, obviously, you know, we're not, we're not like IPR, so we don't even have the means to do it, if we wanted to. But we are still heavily focused on PvP and very much into it. But uh, we're not, we don't really care about CVC that much. O of course, we want to get as much reaction as possible, but that's not really our focus on like being the best TVC clan. And we're not, um, hmm, should I kill Kriggs? I could kill, kill either one of the, with them with this skill. Let's get Kriggs here. And like I mentioned at the start briefly, the, um, there has been big diminishing returns on reaction accessories. Stone skin accessories are honestly just like flat out better. Of course you will use both of them, but if you can put your Nougars in 4 piece stone skin, it's way better and you you don't really want to do that. Maybe you want to have like one or two champions on reaction, but you really want to have only or mostly stone skin, so reaction is kind of going out of the meta. Well, I mean it might make a comeback at some point, but it's definitely out of the meta and then Reaction has been in the game a lot longer than Stone Skin as well, and people that were in the top class, like me, I mean, I have tons of reaction. I mean, I generally have reaction on everybody. Obviously, since it's faction specific, it's super RNG, but I pretty much have it on like everything, so. And I, I wish I could trade my reaction to like, uh, I don't know one third of the amount in stone skin or something like that so the battle there's like you know there's no argument that it's about uh, pvp or like account progression it's just about who can put out uh, more points who has more trophies who, who, who wins against who i think that's really what it comes down to maybe maybe some some might say an ego battle We'll see what the IPR people say if we can talk with them. Okay, I think we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna go with the UDK again. I really like to pick UDK against Sifi and Taros. It's kind of my standard pick against them. Also, in case some, I've had this situation many times that I do this. And they just happen to have our base, and um, I don't counter, not counter, I don't uh, 
prevent Tin from countering me as well as I was hoping for. But then I pull out the Harima and it's... I mean, not Harima. Then I, then I pull out the Wukong now that it's in support build and it's okay. Okay, we could go with Sup Wukong here too. I mean, either Wukong or Angora is what I'm thinking. I think if I go with Wukong though, they, they, they're totally just gonna ban my Dutchess and I'm not gonna have any revivers. I think we'll go with Angora and we're we're gonna be locked out. Yeah. But Wukong does have Polymorph, I'm planning to use it today if I just find the opportunity. If I had like Armands in this battle instead of either Dutchess or Angora, then I probably would have picked Wukong, but he got the Armands or the first pick. Yeah, my Whiting Narthus is a good example. I wish I had him on 4P Stone Skin. I would much prefer that. He's in triple reaction though, but Stone Skin doesn't just completely prevent all damage, but also prevents the buffs and the CC and even gives you protection to buff strip. It just does so much more than reaction. Even though you have, you know, the one downside on it is that bombs can destroy you, but you know, bombs generally can destroy you even on reaction, unless you have like uh, immunity or double bolster on your team or something like that. And nobody can run bolster in the meta because of Narsus. So. But yeah, I'm, I mentioned this in the last couple videos multiple times because it's been going so oddly well but I really didn't have any um, big new upgrades I didn't really pull any top champions even though you know on Sunday I pulled a couple uh, um, mid or low tier voids but even before that and regardless of that it's been going fairly well recently like better than before just we're more used to the matchups or something like that. I'm really not quite sure why we are doing better, but we are doing better. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying that, but I think we lost this one. It's not looking the best. Well, let's see, let's see. They have around shields on everybody, but I don't think I can kill the Harima, but it could be kind of close. Ah, so close. Too close. God damn, everybody almost died, but barely survived. Damn. I have my Nars is kind of fast, he's not in the most, uh, you know, tankiest build, uh, the um, highest damage build, let's say. He's like 250 plus speed, yeah, okay. We, we lost that one, I kind of knew it from the, um, from the lobby, it was kind of looking bad. If we just had the first pick, I think we would have been much better off in that battle, and obviously if we had rocked any, um, Polymorph, then we would have innocently won it. So I feel like that battle was kind of like 50-50. Like, um, it's not like it was low chance for us to win at all. I just I I always speak about it, but I really want to get one strong champion for my defense, like Galatir, Grixia, or maybe the new uh, champion nice the shadow thief like one really strong champion for my defense and then I would be so happy I just <laughs> when I finally get my first mythical pool I really really wish that I use my five years of terrible shard iron G in this game and I I get it on that one pool I really <laughs> I really want my first mythic pool to be something good and by something good, I mean something top tier in classic arena meta. Like, I don't want to get some random PV champion or anything like that. I'm gonna cry if it's something like that. It would, it would suck balls if I'm being frank with you.
you know, you know, a funny example is that uh, Cruisen from IPR, who I just uh, did couple videos with recently, and I was just uh, just made the video with him and Doc and Noobs, and he's also like I just mentioned him when we were looking at IPR CVC score, but he, you know, he plays on like Doc Marrow account, I think. Or, correct me if I said the wrong name, but we, which is like a big well. And he also has his own account, but he's not like a spender or a big, big spender on his own account. And he has only pulled one champion, one mythic champion on his own account, and it's Galatir. So I wish that was me. I really wish it was. Okay, Marius. Um, hmm. Yeah, he can only pick UDK or Lockout at this point, so I don't think we're even gonna bother with... Um... With the Storm skin. Should I go with Wukong? Let's go with Wukong. Let's go early Wukong. Now we'll have more Polymorph. Now we have three champions in Polymorph. Ob obviously, Wukong doesn't have 6-star, but he does have accuracy, so he it counts. It's good enough. Because obviously that Marius A1 is super annoying, super RNG. If he gets it at the right time and doesn't get polymorphed, it's horrible for us. So we want to get as much of it as possible. As a nuke build too, Wukong is kind of good against Marius because he can just die and get rid of the enviable debuff that way. But I kind of failed late that... Since I don't have Harima, people pick it very often against me, and I don't, you know, have any like lockout champions to force bans from the enemy. I really don't. Um, my Wuk I'm not really able to use my Wukong because I have to battle against the Harima, and I, for me, I think I'm better off with the support build for for now at least. Like, yeah, again, like he, he has um, tactic like. Um, Basically double lockout with... Should I go with Necrot instead of... Uh... Yeah, let's go with Necrot. He, he has basically double lockout with Armands and Warlord. We, we were kind of unlucky that he got the first pick again, but... Um, if he picked Harima, I certainly wouldn't have been able to ban it. And Wukong is completely trash and not able to do anything if they have uh, Harima. Protoss is a little bit better in that situation. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe the Necrot wasn't the best here because I forgot about the fact that um, my Wukong is going to be lowest HP in this battle. But I didn't really have any good picks left either, to be honest, because uh, he got the Ankara. I didn't really have any good... Um, stuff like Helicat wouldn't have been good there. Ah, uh, I think we lost this one too. Well, we'll, we'll see. Maybe, maybe we get Polymorph. B yeah, that, that, this is why I really want to get more too, by the way. <laughs> People keep asking me that why, why do I... Why am I going for mod? But yeah, mod is gonna be great. When I kill it now, when I kill the Warlord, I'm just gonna get locked out again, but we have to do it. Polymorph? No. At least we didn't get any feeble, so I I'll take it. Mm, but yeah, we're all locked out. That's not good. Yeah, we I mean, we lost it, of course. Lockout is just, you know, kind of impossible to deal with, especially nowadays when Lockout champions do buff trip too, unless you are faster or you have mythic champions, and I don't have either one of those options. With Like, I, I keep seeing some of, you know, <laughs> mega spenders telling me that, nah, it's not that bad, you know, mythic champions kind of counter, <laughs> counter Lockout, so... But you really, I mean, both of them, you want supports and nukers, but, like, 
if you want to do any damage against them, you need mythic nukers. It's not just support. So obviously, if you have something like Grixia, then you can deal with that. Or Galatir, you can either lock lock them out or unlock yourself out after you get locked out because of them swapping forms. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it's hard. Lockout is still a tough and pain to deal with for most players in the game. Even for me, I it's very tough to deal with it. When Necret was good and not countered so hard, it was a bit better because Necret kind of could make me survive a couple of turns, but he doesn't really do it anymore. And okay, the last fight was kind of my best. I totally forgot about the fact that my Wukong wasn't high enough HP. I need to look at the bills because um, I'm sure I can make him higher HP than Rotos. I just need to tweak his build a little bit, maybe lose a little bit accuracy. I, I forgot that um, I didn't fix it. I, I, I was supposed to, I, I had it fixed before when I was running him as a support. Okay, this time we got the Harimoth though. Ah, uh, not Harim. <laughs> Never hurry, but this time we got the Armands though, so it gives us much better position. First pick is OP. Okay, Gizma can Harima, but he doesn't have. 6 star blessing on Gizmak, which makes him a lot stronger than he would be otherwise. And we picked the two Polymorph champions already, so we're kind of on track against this guy. I'm almost tempted to go with Wukong on this one too, actually. Should I do it? Either Angora or Wukong is what I'm thinking. Yeah, let's go with Wukong, because in this battle, like I just Set the opposite of the last one. We have Armand, so it's not like he can ban my Dutchess. We don't need to go with Ankara. He also doesn't have Lockout, and if he did pick Lockout here, we could just ban it. So, one, one Reviver is totally safe in this matchup, and that's how it usually is for my enemy teams, but <laughs> not for me unless we get the first pick. Well, I mean, that's still 50% of fights. It's a lot better than it used to be, but when my enemy speaks Sifi, I I'm able to ban it maybe like, I don't know, 5% of battles, basically never. Yeah. Um, two days ago I fought a guy with, <laughs> with four local champions in one team, Th that's where the meta is at. Usually they have at least, you know, two, two local champions, in including months but two or three is very common very common okay Narsus is good so far but if we if we don't proc reaction on the second hit where okay hit, yeah but we can do, we can do a buff strip on Wukong. Wukong is gonna be crazy now if he takes a turn before my Narsus, which I think he will. Oh, okay, he didn't. Okay. Uh, I don't think I want to use my Nuke. I think we're just gonna use A1 here, which feels kind of stupid, but it's the way to go. Um. Yeah, we couldn't kill Gizmak with A3. I know what you're thinking, but he has the Harima passive and. Gizmog is HP scaling champion with a lot of HP. There's no way we would have killed it with A A3. N not even close. Okay, come on. Is it finally time for Wukong to take a turn? I was hoping it would go before my Nukers, but it didn't. Um, At this point, do I even... Should I Polymorph Harimon? Nah, let's go for the buff strip. Narsus died. Oh, okay, okay. Now, now we're super good. 
I think we won this battle. R Rodos is gonna get turned, Harima passive is out of the way, we're gonna get at least Marriage Scar, probably Sifi too, since it doesn't have defense buff and it has block buff step buff. I think we're safe. Yeah. Uh, I could weak hit against Gizma. Do I want to do it? I think I want to do it. Okay, nice. Excellent. I think we're good. I think we're done. I think A2 is gonna kill us if he. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Okay. Yeah, that, that was kind of low hit. That might have actually been without Helm Smasher, to be honest, but it was good enough, so we'll take it. I think uh, this battle was a prime example that the Wukong is gonna, gonna work out well. <laughs> it's just the one battle before where I picked Wukong. The, the, that that um, that was horrible choice. I, I don't think I could have won the battle whatever I picked. I couldn't pick anything good as the last one, but it shouldn't have been uh, Necrot. It should have been something else. But yeah, Mord soon, Mario soon, can't wait. And we have Un Kemsa that we are using today, not, not in every battle, you know, I'm not gonna force it when it's not necessary, but I will definitely look for the opportunities where she might be useful. <laughs> Damn, I've, I've, I found a funny Reddit thread. Well, okay. Depends on your perspective, but you know, I'll show it to you. Th talking about the <laughs> matchup. For those who don't bother looking at the leaderboards, we have some degeneracy taking place, and it's, you know, picks are about the IPR and GNL, but they, they did like, um, I don't know, um, 50 million points, more than 50 million points after that picture, <laughs> so. It's it's much uh, much worse than it it even seems on that one. Again, you know, nothing to those guys. If you're into it, then you're in, in into it. But it's not really. It, it's just about who can win against who. It's not not about PvP per se. No, not at this point. <laughs> maybe maybe it w was in like the first few CBCs, but at this point, it's not about that. Um. Do I, do I even want to go with Angora? We're gonna go with Stalos anyway, so let's pick Stalos first and we'll see what we do on the last pick. It might not even be Angora, though again we're in the situation that... Um, I do have UDK against Rodos, so it's very likely to ban it too, but we don't have safety that we have a Reviver in, in this battle. Maybe, maybe Helicat? Okay, not 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 with Galatra. I was gonna say, maybe Helicat could be an option here. Um, let me think. Yeah, from my current options, I think we're definitely gonna go with either Angora or Wukong, but I, I think we're actually gonna go with Wukong on this one. Yeah. He's still very likely to ban my... Well, okay, if I ban Wukong, maybe he does it otherwise, but... It's still very likely to ban UDK, but since yeah, okay, since I only had one reviver, he might just go for it. Go for it, okay. I understand, but um, Gizma can get polymorphed at the start. We do have some polymorphs on the team. If Gizma gets polymorphed, then we are in good position. Then we have multiple turns to actually do something in in this battle. Okay, he didn't get polymorphed. Not good. Now it's looking very, very bad for us. Ah, and neither... Oh, neither did Kalatir, but we did get a turn on Wukong before Gizmark. So, usually the Gizmarks are super fast, but we went first. So, can we polymorph it? No wicked, please. Ah, ah, every, everything that could go wrong went wrong. That's not, not fun. Not, not good. He won every single, every single dice roll that we had at the start of the battle. Okay, 
we already lost. I, I feel like this also was kind of, you know, 50-50 actually, but we, we just we just lost multiple coin tosses in a row, so. Okay, let's see. Ah, oh, fuck. Le let's see what the public thinks about the the CVC Whale Wars. Um, they really need that sacred shard in tier six personal rewards. Ah, uh, again, second pick. Larium board are watching this live while drinking Moet and Chandon by the bottle. Yeah, I don't even know what it is. I I assume it's some kind of expensive alcohol, but I literally have never heard about this. I mean, I'm not a big drinker. I'm not like, you know, some kind of uh, uh, absolutist. I certainly can drink, but usually just on holidays, pretty much, I mean. I barely drink myself. Drinking it, they're bathing in it and using their beads. Who even has that kind of money to burn? Uh, kids of oligarchs. Well, you know. Uh, I don't really want to talk about it, but you know, we know, we know, you know, it's the internet. People are kind of. Uh, mean and we do know personal information about quite many of the big spenders in this game but i'm not really i don't really want to talk about it but you know some of that information is known Let, let's put it that way and you know if they have money and they are like you know ceos of big companies then <laughs> good for them it's not like it's not like I can really whine about it, but... Averaging about 2.9 million CVC points per clan member. Just imagine how tryhard you have to be in one of these clans becomes like a job. Probably not every for everyone. That's kind of my thoughts about uh, it too, and especially you know, towards um, the end part, when, when I was booted out of the mad, it, they didn't used to care about CVC at all. Like, the mad motto used to be that we care about arena, and we want the best and most active arena players, and your spending and CVC performance literally doesn't matter at all. I wasn't the only, like, free-to-play or low spender. There was a couple other ones long, long time ago, but it's multiple years ago since they quit, like uh, more than two years at this point, so I I lasted much longer than all of them, but there used to be a couple other ones too, so, but even they kind of moved to that direction that they, they do care about CVC rewards and Hydra, even though CVC is uh, increasingly less, uh, um, what's not important, less less relevant. But yeah, I, I feel like it, you know, obviously Parium is trying to make money. I don't think CVC is really good for... Uh, it might be good for Parium's pockets, I'm not gonna, like, deny that. But I don't think it's good for the community and the... Um, no, no, not, not just the, you know, hardcore endgame players, but the community as well, because it creates a lot of friction inside the clans. Uh, and obviously, you know... That that works to Plarium's benefit because they're trying to, you know, get the players to compete against each other in, in spending, and I understand that nothing wrong with that. But yeah, I, it, it's super annoying because if you're just in the PvP and you try to make the most with uh, like <laughs> trillion times less resources than other people, but it's kind of impossible to find a like-minded clan because you know. All of the other arena players are gonna be, or all of the other arena clans 
are gonna be heavily spending and care about the CVC and have minimum requirements and so on. By the way, a little bit add. I think our clan is full. We should have like two people joining today, so we're we're full and already booked like um, instantly when we had slots. But you know, we're always recruiting. If you're looking for a very competitive PvP focused clan that doesn't care about CVC, we are the only only clan in the game. So heat us up. I don't really understand why there isn't other clans like that. I used to, for years, I was trying to ask Matt to make a third clan that uh, would not have CVC requirements at all. And they really thought about it. It almost happened, but um, they changed their mind about it. I don't know why. I, I feel it was a mistake, to be honest, from them. But yeah, maybe that's a very nice community that you're hardcore in-game competitive arena player but you don't want to you know spend godless amounts of money but i feel like surely there would be um there would be people to fill up multiple clans if you just uh, if there was clans that do it i mean i, I certainly have gotten <laughs> gotten um messages and we could make multiple clans if we you know if we had the room but it's kind of sad i mean I wish you could separate the, the CVC from PvP, that you could be a competitive clan and not focus on it. I mean, you kind of can, but but not really. It's kind of hard. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make it so that you can, but it it really hasn't been that way for for a while. I think it's part of it has to do like you know, Mad has always been like considerably worse in CVC than IPR and GNL and like I don't know twenty other top CVC clans. I don't know now. Now now Mad might be up there, but I don't think Mad even the main clan of Mad. I don't think it was in in the top twenty clans of CVC at least until now. And I thought that was a good thing to be honest, but. Now, now, now my, now my own clan is the is the new thing to to be in. So maybe we will make a second clan at some point. Some of the some of the other officers were kind of cringing when I mentioned that, and they were saying that we have enough to do with one clan. But you know, I wasn't saying that we're gonna do it right now. But I am certainly um, considering making another clan at some point. We can't take everybody into our clan, sadly. Is it gonna be Karima? Karima and Sifi is what I expect. What? Elikat and Park Drake. Now we're now we're getting fancy. I don't know what's up with that though. I mean so I can just free, freely pick Rotos and there's nothing that he can do about it. And then I can also pick uh, whoever I want. I guess he Helicat and... Uh, um, not Helicat. Mikage and Wukong are my two... I don't think my Uko is scared. I, I would have to check, but I don't think my Uko is scared. These are my two buff strippers. I don't have a third one. Marius would be one actually, or and Maud. So I'll have two more buff strippers in future. Um... Wait, we could just go with, um, he doesn't have any immunity. We could just go with Mitrala, and Mitrala would, like, ruin his day. I mean, Armands is a buff stripper, Mikake and Wukong. So there's three buff strippers, and then I'm gonna get, like, Maud and Marius very soon. So it's not like I need more buff strippers, to, to be clear. But yeah, both Tormin and Mitra could have been good here. They are gonna decimate, decimate him with control, but let's go with Mitra. Um, do I want to ban Ronda? I feel like Ronda is the way to go. Yeah, let's go with Ronda. 
Good to have gone with Wukong. I, I thought about it, but let's go with Rondaban. He has Crackling Roots Mastery on Wukong. So, it, which is kind of funny because Wukong could just polymorph champions in Stone Skin. But that's definitely a new Wukong. And Wukong does hit hard, so maybe he's trying to kill my champions through Stone Skin. We'll see what he does. Okay, let's see if my Narcissus triple reacts. Oh, I, I was expecting for double ally attack, and I was gonna say, let's see if my triple reaction holds up, but nothing. Okay. Ah, okay, that's. I think Mitrola has one piece of reaction, but he didn't proc it. Is she just gonna instantly die again after revival? I think she can survive the Wukong A3. Most likely. I mean, surely she can, right? He does have attack buff though, maybe not. It'd be close. Oh, we can just kill it. Never, never mind. We're, we're safe. Yeah, let, let's just kill it and get the hex debuff up and then... Then heads will start to roll. Oh, come on, let me get... Damn, Wukong is gonna go before Mitrola, so she isn't gonna get turned. Now it's looking very bad for us. I think we lost. I think we lost to Bardrag. I don't think we can... Yeah, we can... We can fix it anymore, okay. That's kind of funny, but it, you know, happens. <laughs> not, not not my first, uh, first time losing, though. It might be first time that I lose to Bardrag, I think. Maybe. So he got us with a uh, Crackling Roots Wukong, which is kind of interesting. Let me double check if my Mitrola had reaction or not. Maybe she didn't. I kind of um, down geared her a couple times because I w Oh fuck. Oh fuck. <laughs> Mitrola didn't have any gloves so, because, you know, I wasn't using her and I was changing her build for um, PvE. I totally didn't remember that she didn't um didn't have any gloves on at all that that's a little bit embarrassing even the even the boots is not um as candy like i said she used to have a better oh yeah okay she used to have a better item set but i stole stole most of her pieces and she's kind of in crappy care i haven't been using her i probably shouldn't have used her in that battle but i forgot she was like this ungeared she probably would have survived at the start if she had, uh, not probably, she guaranteed would have survived if she had gloves on. <laughs> She's losing like a ridiculous amount of HP by not, not having the gloves on, so happens. Well, it shouldn't happen, but it happened. <laughs> it is what it is. Anyway. I for one would like to thank these two clans, as well as the other whales out there who spend 99% of money so rest of us don't have to keep uh, doing it. I saw in Smiley's Discord from Gods and Legends member that apparently these, these two clans are matched against each other. Um, yeah, again, I know. Okay, I agree with this guy. Ego at his finest. <laughs> no offense. Again, like I mentioned before, I I totally tune out from the CVC thing normally. There's some other people, like some of my, like many mad members and many of my old friends, they, they know like every single top account. They know who owns it, who used to own it. They know their CVC records and who does what amount of points in CVC. I never follow any of that. I I don't um, 
I don't really regard it, recall it, but from what I've known, I think, um, as you can even see from the picture, where do we have it? Yeah, IBR has 83 trophies, um, TNL has 81, so two less, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I'll ask them about it, I'm pretty sure uh, TNL has lost to IPR once and IPR has never lost, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure IPR has, IPR has never lost a CVC battle, and they basically, you know, want to make them lose and want to take uh, some kind of crutch mat match against them. You know, if it was me, if I was them, I would make a deal. I, I would just let the other one win every other time. I, I've spoken about this before, you know, I, I've tried to... I tried to speak Xenus on to these top clans. Give me a sec, I need to think about my picks so I don't make, make a mistake here. Do we just go with this? Could pick UDK though, I think we have to pick UDK. I have tried to speak to the like the, the clan leaders and why don't we just make a deal? Like for instance, you know, MAD and IPR were kind of friendly. So why don't we just, but okay, of course IPR wouldn't do it, but like why don't we just lose every other time against each other and make a deal? Then we can do super low points and win the next battle guaranteed after we win each other. Then we don't have to, to waste resources. And it's just, you know, much easier and cleaner. But nobody's up for that. Like, you would think that all of the top clans were doing it against each other, unless they hate hate each other. And um, I think IPR has pretty good relations. I don't think Gods and Legends has super good relations with the other top clans, but um, I think many of the top clans could do something like that. But they don't. And I, I think the only reason for that is just, you know, ego. Like, that's what I think, but, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure they will disagree with that, but I, I feel like it would be much more practical just to make, make deals all the time, especially when, you know, the top clans, they, that regularly put out high points, they are going to meet each other all the time and they know about it, you know, they put a lot of effort, every CVC, into looking at the leaderboards and manipulating, like, what points they get, what clan they get matched up against and so on. They really like, they, they put a lot of effort into it, I can speak it from experience. But even for instance, even inside match, like, they, I think they did it maybe once if I don't recall wrongly, I think they did it once, but Mad could, for instance, if they do high points, they could just try to snipe themselves or snipe another friendly clan and do resets that way and get um get much more um like guaranteed results with lower effort i i yeah you get my point i don't understand why they don't do it i understand why they wouldn't do it with clans that they are not friends with but you know it's not like all of the top clans hate each other so And, you know, if you're some random clan that doesn't rank high in the CBC leaderboards, it's a lot less relevant because there, there's basically infinite amount of clans and you're probably not gonna ever meet the same clan again. But if you're one of those top clans, you meet the other top clans all the time. So it would actually make a lot of sense for them to just agree to win every other battle. But they don't do it. By the way, if you are our enemy clan in the whatever battles that we get, we we are totally open to like, you know, negotiations and deals. We would ideally always win or lose, do minimum points in CVC and try to try to make sure that like let's say that there's like reaction on the first two slots. We don't want to go for 3 0. We want to go for um um, two one or one two, so that both sides get get as much reaction as possible. We're not trying to, you know, gatekeep or like try to hog the resources. We're we're super open to making deals with people, and we're not gonna 
go for win every single CVC anyway, so we are very easy to negotiate with. Like, instead of, you know, having an, like, if it's a close battle, instead of having an ego war that both are doing more points than they want to, and it's a close matchup and we're seeing Wu can win, and Wu will barely get the 2 1. Instead, I would much rather that both of us do as little points as possible, and one side just agrees to take the win, and we both win the next TVC and, and um, live happily after that. It's kind of going good, but un he only has one reviver, so he can't really make a comeback until after we kill the Marisco. But we're kind of having a hard time killing the <laughs> killing the Harima. I can't do any damage until Harima is dead. And we only have one Nuker. Ah, uh, weak it. Come on, please no actually yeah, we need to go for the kill here. I think we can do it. Yeah, we're farming those kill streak and Burdened of Dead Procs, and we're also. Um, I think I need to save it. Yeah, he, if, I'm not sure if he has the Adrena or not, but if he does, then. Re okay, he doesn't. Reviving UDK would have been a massive mistake. Mm, okay, that's not good. But yeah, reviving UDK would have been a mistake. Uh, I think we lost it, goddammit. Reviving UDK would have been a mistake, but I guess we lost it either way. That, that was a super close one. Okay, we lost it. <laughs> like I said, I can't really use my new Wukong because Harima completely guts him, but he has the Harima, so he can he can get away with that, and if you don't have to deal with Harima, then Wukong is super good. It's just that 99% uh, of the enemies that I meet have Harima, and they pick it in almost every single battle. Should we mix it up and maybe open with Mika girls Wukong or something like that? Let's open with Wukong and draw him to a loop and see what he does. He, he does have the first pick though. So he's probably gonna have both Armands and Lockout, and we're gonna be locked out, so... Maybe Mikake would have made more sense. Okay, he went with the UDK, but we're obviously... Uh, not gonna be Krotos at this point, I don't think. Well, maybe, maybe. Should I save it as the last pick, or should I just go with Stalvos right away? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, he only has Nuger picks left. It really depends what Nugers he has on his account. I think we are gonna go with Rados actually. We do have the Wukong and... Nah, he's gonna ban it. Uh, let's go with Stalos. We, we have to go with Stalos. I don't have anything else scary, so he's totally gonna ban the Wukong otherwise. He might still ban it, but let's see what he pick. We, I think we're gonna go with either Duchess or Helicat. Okay, I think uh, definitely Dotsus. He's gonna, he's totally gonna ban Dotsus though. But since he went with bombs, we we have to go for the Dotsus ban. Uh, if, if we ban like the Astralite here, I don't think we, we can win it. We're just gonna be Perma. 
better my luck doubt even though he doesn't have Damn it. I'm almost tempted to go for it though. I feel like we can't win if he gets the Astrolith. Should we give let's give it a go. Let's see if we can kill him through the Block out. This is, you know, kind of annoying that people can do this, but they can get away with this and just pick one nuker. Well, maybe the um, VCR might, I guess, technically also be as a nuker, but it's not really gonna do a lot of damage. Let's see. Okay, we started out with Polymorph. I think, are we good? Okay, so VCR is not even in damage mode. So he's just, you know... But we can still get, yeah, slept. He's just relying on the fact that we can't do anything against him because he goes first. <laughs> it's kind of annoying, to be honest. But okay, we called his bluff and we called it correctly. And we, we got it with the Polymorph Wukong, so good job. We, we haven't had the most insane battle record today. I think we're like 50-50, if not uh, maybe one more loss than win. I'm not, I didn't keep a track of it. We, it's annoying because, hey, wait, we have all of the battles here. Ne never mind. Okay, so we have one more loss than win. Okay. But, um, th yeah, th we had pretty tough and close battles to a couple of the ones that we lost, so, but I'm I'm expecting the Wukong to... It seems good. I think it was the right decision for my account to go with the support Wukong. Come on, why can't I pick an opponent? Am I too big on the screen? Maybe I should make myself a little smaller. I wasn't really paying attention to it. But yeah, I think we will probably have pretty um, calm maybe one or two months in red. I don't think we're gonna have any new big update quite soon. I think the next fusion is not gonna be that interesting for most people. Even if they do it, it's not gonna be something that is gonna change the meta. I think we're just gonna, you know, it's gonna be a little bit quiet for a bit. I'm, I'm sure on the fall there will be another big update. We'll, we'll see what it is, but I think there's still some time until that one. Okay, do your worst, Volga. Let's see what you got. Ah, uh, interesting registered. Check out this 3 million house right here. And there's this guy's um, tech team arena defense, which is almost fully only plus four primal champions. He even has two plus four secrons, meaning that he has pulled ten secrons. <laughs> yeah, ca ca can't say I'm, I don't feel a little bit, you know, <laughs> overwhelmed by accounts like that. By the way, I still haven't pulled any mythical, and I think vast majority of the players have not pulled any mythical champions yet. It's gonna take you more than a year to get a guaranteed mythical, assuming that you're ultra end game player. If you're if you maybe played the game one year or something like that so far, it might take you, I don't know, three years to get your first mythic champion. Uh do we want to go with this? I don't know if we're gonna have the damage though. But I think we have to, yeah.
he got the Marius sadly, and we're against Harima, so it's a terrible matchup. But matchup for me, pretty much as bad as it can be. We can't even go for the lockout plan because otherwise Narsus would one shot our team. If if this guy if this guy just gave me one of these, if he gave me his other Siegfried, but Siegfried is kind of tricky because I would still be hard countered by Harima. But if he gave me one of his, you know, those champions, like give me Lazarus, uh, Gismark or um, um, Grixia, out of those champions, I would be unstoppable in Live Arena. It would be so different than it is right now. Siegfried, even though on paper it's one of the best ones, but it's kind of kind of tricky because I'm already getting hard hard cocked by the Harima owners, which is everybody. Um, I would need something else to make the Siegfried work as well as other people can. But by something else, I mean I need to be fast and I I need to have Harima, so. Maybe we can get Polymorph Proc on Harima. That could be the win condition. Nice. I, I'll take that. Ah, barely didn't kill the Angora. I recently swapped the boots from my Rotos to Speed instead of um, eight, uh, instead of Attack on the Ascension. Let me show you. But we obviously didn't proc Helm Smasher on, on that hit. It, it makes so big difference, like, you know, hits are al almost gonna do double damage if you proc it. Yeah, here's what I have on Rotos. We're 266 speed right now, so pretty happy with that obviously you know there's much faster nukers out there but his gear is pretty much as good as it can get so okay i think that polymorph proc on harima was was enough for the win easily <laughs> you you see i always complain about arima but you you can see like Harima and no Harima. If there's no Harima, then my Rotos can go into the town and demolish whatever team they have, no matter how tanky they are. As long as he can, you know, get get a turn in and actually use his abilities. But if there's Harima, then he is like a sitting duck and doesn't do anything. I need to check my Ukko. I think regardless if he's scared or not, I probably should take him away from my arena taps. I'm not using him anyway. I might even take Mitchell about it. At least at least she has the gloves on right now, so she will be slightly better than she <laughs> she was in the last battle. But I'm having Couple new champions, so need to update my my roster. Okay, should we should be brave it and just try to go with Wukong and Rodos instead of UDK. Let, let's see what he does. He could go with Angkor and UDK here. That might be pretty bad for us. If he goes like Ankara, UDK, and Lockout. That could be terrible. I I would pick Ankara and UDK if I was him right now. Okay, Harima and Lockout. He could still be 
one of them. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna go with Tatsis and probably go with the uh, ban on the uh, the Narsus, not the Warlord or Arma. By the way, everybody's plus four except Narsus. Goddamn. Yeah, so something like nice the Shadow Thief or Paras or Arima would be good about now, but I think. We have to go with the Stalos since he got the heart, uh, got the Narsus, so... Okay, <laughs> that's gonna be annoying. He has double lockout and he can reset the Warlord lockout, so he basically has triple lockout. M maybe he's. I think he's not. Oh, he did. I was gonna say that maybe he's not even gonna go for the Narsus ban because I'm pretty sure I'm I'm certain that one of those lockouts is or Sifi is faster than my Armands, so. He probably should have gone for the Dutch's ban. I feel like that would have been. Gar guaranteed win for him. Maybe I have a tiny chance to still win, but le let's see. I mean, not, not a tiny chance, I have a moderate chance to win. If we just get Polymorph on Harima, it we're good. It might be tougher than the last battle, but here as well, if we get Harima Polymorphed, we are in very good position, possibly. Well, it depends at what point. But we do have three champions in Polymorph. Yeah, okay, got it. Yeah, we're, we're still locked out, but now it's a lot more interesting from here on uh, forward. Though he's, yeah, he's gonna reset the lockout and he's gonna have his triple lockout though. I think we're just gonna focus on the CV. <laughs> okay, so far so good. If I can stun the CV, Stalus might. Ah, I didn't proc the stun. I think it's 55% chance, but yeah, I would have gotten a turn with Stalus, but we didn't. At least Harima ate the full two-turn polymorph and not one turn, so that could be good. We don't have UDK or um, Angora passive or anything like that here, and si since he does have triple lockout, I'm not, I'm not able to put out the immunity buff from Yatsus. Having my own Sifi would be super interesting to protect the Rotos, but obviously I don't have one. And now he's gonna get slept. Ah, oh, fuck. Well, he, he can still get polymorphed on, like, you know, everybody. See if he could, could get slept, uh, polymorphed. Grixia could get polymorphed, so we do have opportunities. Ah, now we got a stun when it, it's too late. We're locked out again. We might be able to kill the Harima with A1, but it's just gonna get revived, so let's let's focus on the Sifi and see if we can take her down first. Okay, another polymorph. You go for the polymorph for a reason, I mean, you guys know this. This is why me and other people, we go out of our way to, you know, get as much polymorph as possible. It obviously is very impactful, especially for somebody like me who's always going second and like 0% of players that I meet are slower than me in live arena. 
Okay. Protoss died, but we got um Polymorph. I don't think I don't think we can make a comeback here. I don't think my Gatsus can ever pull off a revive against this guy. Even if we get the Grixia Polymorphed. I, I think we're done. I don't think I can pull out a miracle from my ass at th this point. Little bit um, anticlimactic. It almost seemed like we had a small chance, but you know, he has many lockout champions and we don't have any mythic champions, so we're done. I mean, I could technically, okay, I could technically re reduce the cooldown of uh, abilities on Darts with Mastery, but we will need like two procs to do it. I think pretty much any mythic nuke champion though and we we would have been able to win this matchup e especially if it's any any like half tanky uh mythic champion something like a nice the shadow thief and this wouldn't have even been close we would have we would have destroyed this guy but staldus his a1 isn't isn't good enough and he doesn't have another form Maybe if I get Polymorph on Grixia and Wukong A2 on the Warlord at the right time, maybe there's a tiny chance to win this battle. <laughs> Damn, he's playing it super safe. He's not even doing damage to my Duchess because he's avoiding that my Wukong could could get turns and do one ability. Ka kind of odd, I feel like he could just kill my Duchess, but okay. Not gonna lie, I'm a, I'm a bit salty here. I, I feel like in these kind of matchups, if if he can't kill me in in this long with this setup, I should just get the win automatically. <laughs> Maybe that wouldn't be fair, but that's kind of how I'm how I'm feeling right now. I feel like I should have gotten the win at this point. Would be super funny if we could, if we could get. To, okay, okay, let's just give up. Yeah, there was a you know tiny chance to win it, but no, I I don't think we're gonna get. It's too OP having three lockouts in in one team. Quite many battles today. The enemy picked. Narses and didn't let us have it and that was kind of creating a lot of problems for us I almost feel like just speaking UDK with uh, Rodos without UDK. He could pick UDK, but he's not gonna have like any reviver at all in the team. Maybe we could just go with Mikake or something like that if he does it. Should I pick it? Maybe I'll still pick the 
Yeah, let, let's still pick it anyway. Let's go with the UD guy. Necret might almost be good here. I wonder if I should do it. I mean, I'm gonna get locked out. Angora could be good. But Alas is Force Affinity. Necrat is kind of interesting option. Or should I just go with Mikage? Let's go with Mikage. Mikage does have the buff strip. We would reduce the damage from Taras, assuming that we go before him on Mikage and get rid of the buffs. And obviously, he has some annoying buffs on that team too. It's not just for the Taras AoE damage. Nah, Taras went first. Well, maybe we can... Yeah, okay. We got reaction proc on Narsus, so we're totally fine. It's okay. Could have gone way, way worse than it did. Well, to be honest, he didn't have that many buffs. Maybe, maybe Taras could have even survived it. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, Narsus, maybe. Buff strip or stun? I think stun. Damn, okay. That's not the best, but um, can we still do it? Two turn down this isn't fun. We'll see how they we look. I don't, yeah, maybe next turn. He's gonna g hit us super hard with all of those buffs. Everybody is back to full HP because I I still haven't done a single ability on Narsus after two and a half minutes of the battle. Okay, ah, uh, no, he has to nook. Okay, we lost it. Yeah. No, Dutch has barely survived. But we're locked out, so we lost it. Pretty sure, let me double check, but I don't think we re resisted it. Yeah, lo lockout OP. Sucks, sucks. I wonder when we have the next mythical 2x event. I think I got maybe like 20 shards or something like that. Maybe it will be my lucky day the next time, but who knows how long it is. They seem to be doing the mythical 2x events very randomly. I feel like we could have one next week or the next one could be in six months. Like, <laughs> you don't even know. They are not doing it on like a set set schedule like they're doing 
do accidents for the other shards. Okay, damn, this guy has a lot of empowerment. Plus four charges, that's gonna hit insanely hard. And even the Quixia is plus three, holy moly, so... Th that means that it's very likely that this other Nougar is gonna be a mythic champion as well. Should I just go with Talos and meme around? We'll just go with this. Like, I mean, the, not Talos, I mean Helica. Talos wouldn't do, you know, trap against the Duchess, so I kind of feel at loss. And obviously, George it can kill Helica through his ability, and Grixia can buff strip him and lock him out, but there's nothing I can really do here, so. Okay. I wonder if I should go for the polymorph or just go for the... Okay, we're gonna YOLO this. Let's go for the A3. Let's see if we can... Okay, we got it from Georgit. That's good. That, actually, we got it from U UDK as well, but that doesn't really matter here. But we got it from Georgit. He doesn't have buff strip. If my Narsus now goes before it... Wait. We're kind of good, right? Aren't we very good here? If my Narthus goes before them, yeah, we can kill the charges. Interesting. Should I kill it with... No, I'm... Okay, this is gonna sound dumb. I'm gonna kill it with... If I kill it with A3, I'm gonna get an extra turn. Do I want to do it? I think we're gonna do it. Where at least we'll have the defense buff. Oh my god, it didn't die, dude. Oh. I thought it was gonna die. I didn't think that... What am I thinking? It's a plus for a charge. It's gonna be way tankier than the usual one. Okay, that, that was a mistake. I, th I didn't even think about the option that it wouldn't die with the A A3, but... It's plus four. <laughs> what was I thinking? You know... Plus four, come on. Of course it's not gonna die. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Uncle Revive OP, is that a comeback? Ah, ah. Lazarus barely didn't die to it. And we... We used uh, um, the buff strip so it's not like we can kill it with the AoE or anything like that. Mm, I think we're done. All right, wait, there's no way we can survive this hit. No way. Even if we were full eight HP, we would die, yeah. Yeah, we, we tried, it's not, yeah, we couldn't do it. 
sucks. Yeah, we on the video with Jock and Cruzen, we were talking about uh, why Plarium is not trying to make Live Arena eSport and focus on tournaments and so on. Probably this is big reason of why, because it's so so uh, unbalanced and unfair. <laughs> so, so, so sometimes I can deal with it, but sometimes it just it feels so 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 disgusting. Like the di disparities between the champions and accounts is pretty bonkers. And I say it as, you know, the player with like by far the least amount of spending and has finished top 3 multiple times. It's the disparity is like disgusting between accounts. Disgusting, disgusting. I almost can't believe, believe it that I was able to make it happen and like multiple times it seems when you look at the current state of the game it like it literally I wouldn't believe it <laughs> if I heard it from somebody else without like you know video evidence which I of course do have but it's almost unbelievable. I would say that if like if mutics were like much more common and every player had like many mutics like let's say five mutics or like multiple mutics even if they weren't like plus four but if mutics were common and you would get multiple mutics every year then we would be somewhere because then you might have some ways to deal with lockout and so on but if like super end game players are gonna get one mutic champion every other year and if you're new new to, new to the game, it might take you like three or four years until you get your first mythic. And then there's like, you know, people that have hundreds of mythics. It's, it's impossible to like create a competitive uh, game mode. It, it sucks. Because the combat in raid is very good if you just, if the champions were not so um, uneven and, you know, Unfair to get. So frustrating. <laughs> now we're kind of having bad vibes at the end of the video, but I'm having multiple disgustingly unfair fights in row, and it's getting me a little bit pissed. Okay, we... Mm, I don't know if we can survive, but we if we can survive, we can certainly kill him with the... Uh, with the Staldos, but... Should I actually go with Ungenza here? I might actually whip that out. Yeah, I think this is gonna be... <laughs> this is gonna be an Ungenza battle. He does have buff strip on Wukong, so we need to be careful about that, because he can... Obviously steal the Poison Cloud, which would be super annoying. But, you know, Wukong is gonna come back anyway, and um, we could polymorph him, so I guess we'll just have to take that risk. And maybe we can... Uh, and we can... Um, I didn't pick Ungenza here specifically for the Poison Cloud, but the other skill, because we can last... We can... Um, not last... We can put decreased defense and weaken on them, 
through the immunity. But um, yeah, may maybe poison cloud can be useful too. We'll see. Ah, uh, okay, we got Polymorph, we didn't get it on Harima, which kind of sucks because it would have mitigated the damage a lot. Oh, he's he's not using the AoE nook, he's saving it for the when we do the Poison Cloud, but you know, we can just spam A1. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna use the Poison Cloud, but we'll, we'll see, depends on the situation. Ah, weak it. That sucks. Uh, should we do it? No, let's let's save the lens. Only if he does the AOE. Unkenza does have pretty good A1, so we don't really mind spamming the A1. And I feel like him saving um, his buff strip, it, it sounds smart, but I think he's kind of being stupid here, because we are keeping the... Hmm, if I... Uh, I think we need to do the shield, not, not the revive. Um, we are keeping the defense buff on the Staldus. He's kind of um, outplaying himself by being smart, because you know we wouldn't do damage without the defense buff. But he's letting us keep it because he's saving the buff steel slash trip for like later. For until we do poison cloud or cleanse. I don't know which one he's waiting out for. Come on, polymorph, polymorph. Oh, okay. No, not that skill yet. Why didn't he do it on Staldus? I feel like Staldus would have died if he did it. Ah. Uh. Uh. And I, I, like I said, I can't run the Nook Wokong because they're just gonna be Karima and Lockout and, and I will lose. I think we're gonna... <laughs> We're gonna end today's session with uh, a little bit, um, you know, Lost Streak. I don't think that happened in, in a while, to be honest, you know. But it happened today, so it is what it is. Mario soon, TM. <laughs> then, then we will have better time. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you better arena uh, session. I hope you... Trillion times better shard RNG. That's it. Have a nice day. See ya.